Why, Johnny, why? That is going to be what we are going to be hearing from everybody, or the question everyone will be asking. Why, Johnny, why? NXT tonight, of course, was the first of the last set of tapings before we get to NXT TakeOver War Games, where I have a feeling next week we will get the announced match of War Games, because they did set that up tonight with a match between the War Raiders and two members of the Undisputed Era, because all four members of the Undisputed Era are back together, but I totally, totally agree. I expect that next week we will have... We will have ourselves a war games match announced. And this is not going to be a 3v3v3 match. This is going to be a 4 versus 4 match. But the biggest story of the night was who attacked Aleister Black. Who attacked Aleister Black. It was the question, and I knew they were going to end with the... With the they, they did make the fact that we were going to have an announcement. Who was going to face Tommaso Ciampa. At NXT to take over War Games. And we did not actually get that announcement tonight for the fact that at the end of the show, who attacked Alistair Black? I mean, we see Alistair Black come in and destroy a bunch of security who was supposed to keep him away until he met William Regal. He came in, got in Regal's face after he, you know, hit our friend Lars Sullivan with a black, black mask. Got in his face and said, where is he? Where is he? He turns around and bam. Johnny Logano with a super kick. Mike in his hand says, I'm ha I, 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 I'm right here. Drops the mic and the show goes off the air. Well, we get an explanation of why Johnny Gargano did this. Is it really, is, it just doesn't make any sense to me though. Why would Johnny Gargano do such a thing? It feels like to me that the, like, it, if it is Johnny Gargano, I want to hear an explanation. But if it's not Johnny Gargano, it feels like this could probably be Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa working, not Tommaso Ciampa, but Alistair Black working together to expose the real attacker. That's where it feels like this is going either way. It was definitely a shocker. Just why, Johnny, why is the question everybody's going to be asking. And if it is Johnny Gargano, this just turned the entire... This just turned NXT on its heels, on its head, for the simple fact that Johnny Gargano has been the ultimate babyface, a Daniel Bryan-esque babyface, and now, he is pretty much a fool, he just stabbed everyone in the back. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with NXT, but of course, NXT started out here with... William Regal talking to those same poor security guards who was supposed to hold Alistair Black back until Alistair Black met with William Regal because Nikki Cross, of course, said, told Alistair Black last week who had attacked him. And, of course, William Regal would want to know who it was to, you know, do the proper thing, the right thing, and send that person to a match with Alistair Black at NXT TakeOver War Games. Unfortunately, due to circumstances outside of WWE's control, I believe he was accept accepting a, an award uh, in New York City when this, if these tapings were happening. We do not have Mario Ranella for the entire tapings for this NXT, these last four tapings. But we do have Vic Joseph, and Vic Joseph did put everyone's fears to rest. But Mario Ranella will be at NXT TakeOver War Games. So it's gonna be it's 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 okay. I guess it's okay to get a break from Mario for a bit. He will be back because Mario is one of those guys who just like takes all your energy and just gets you excited and hyped. But it's going to see it. We will have Mario back for NXT Takeover War Games, so there's not a problem there. It is with Joseph for the next few weeks, which is not a bad not bad at all. I wish he would take over for Percy Watson every once in a while because God, I can't stand Percy Watson half the time. Undisputed Arrow is here, but Bobby, and we get a big Bobby chant from the crowd. Everybody is all happy to see Bobby Fish back. 
We do have my Anna Cole with the microphone. He says, just in case you've been living under a rock, Bobby Fish is back. And the error is one, and the undisputed error is at 100%. And here's a warning to the rest of the NXT locker room. And if you don't believe us, ask the War Raiders, two of the biggest and baddest men in NXT, and we demolish them. If anyone gets in our way, we will take you out. We will get people to fear this place because you fans, you guys are not NXT. We, the Undisputed Era, are NXT. He then brings up Ricochet and the fact that he he did not lose in the triple threat match a few weeks ago for the North American Championship. Pete Dunne took the pinfall. And that he wants his one-on-one rematch. And then before he can say anything else, EC3 makes his way to the ring, makes his way out and says, and that quote, you do not deserve a, 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 another one-on-one opportunity for the NXT North American Championship. And, of course, you know how that's going to make Alistair Black, not Alistair, but Brown and Cole feel. He ain't happy about that. And Cole, uh, yes, EC3 says that it, you may be 100%, your entire group may be 100%, but it, feels, but it don't matter because I am in the top 1%. Adam Cole challenges him to a match. And we get a match between these two, EC3 versus Adam Cole, which was by far a one part of EC3's best match since coming into NXT again as EC3 instead of Derek Bateman back in the day, which he really didn't do nothing back then. Probably his best match so far. Cole with an iron strip, then a chop followed by a scoop slam, then a jumping elbow. EC3 sends in, sends Cole flying. Undisputed Arrow tries to distract EC3, but that don't work. EC3 drops. And they tra- drops Cole on the apron, but back inside, and Cole with a super kick. Cole stomps away in the corner, swinging neck breaker by Cole. Cole with a beat down in the corner, another neck breaker for a one count. Pump kick by Cole for another one. Stomps in the corner by Cole. Cole, EC3 with chops to Cole, but Cole st- stops that. These two had a great back and forth match, and I would like to see these guys for a championship go one on one because this was definitely something worth playing, watching. Cole with a guillotine, guillotine, but EC3 deadlifts him and hits him with a vertical suplex. Both men are down. EC3 with shots to Cole, then a diving forearm, followed by a splash in the corner, then a German suplex. EC3 goes to the 1%er, but Cole gets out. Pump kick blocked. EC3 with a sit out powerbomb for a 2. Undisputed error with another distraction. Cole with a super kick. EC3 turns. That t- get, turns him into a pinfall for a second. Cole goes for the last shot, but EC3 ducks, rolls through, rolls up for Adam Cole for the one, two, three. EC3 beats Adam Cole in a good opening match for NXT. Then after he's after he is you know celebrating outside the undisputed era, Adam like we get a high low by um, Roger Strong and Kyle O'Reilly and they pretty much beat the living hell out of him taking him up to the apron we did have a war chant from the crowd for the war raiders even though they you know they, they didn't come out this week for the simple fact is the WWE um, NXT wanted to like sell their attack from last week which of course is not a problem then we had them Hit, and then you, they, Adam Cole hit the last shot on, on an EC3 who was being held in place. And then, for whatever reason, you all thought, okay, the, uh, it's done. That's it. They've done, they've done what they needed to take this guy out. And then, all of a sudden, Bobby Fish grabs a chair by the announce table, comes over, and just destroys his knee. Destroys um, EC3's knee. For just you know maybe an eye for an eye, it, but that would it would have made a little bit more sense if EC3 would have been the reason that Bobby Fish was injured, but that's of course not true because EC3 was not in NXT at the time. Then we go to the back after all this is over, and we see the security guys again, and Nikki Cross just shows up and starts laughing and laughing, and it's like, he's coming, he's coming, and she's just, like, losing, she's, she is uh, off her rocker, pretty much, pretty much she is off her rocker. Mia Yim versus Aaliyah, this would be Mia Yim's NXT debut is what they said, which, good for her, this is awesome. And we, Aaliyah, I still don't get the whole Aaliyah thing because, like, wasn't it, like, three or four months ago she was a baby face, just a plain old baby face, trying to rock the Nikki Bella look, which was not good for her, and then without really, unless they did it 
in a backstage segment, which I must have missed, she just turned out heel. She's a heel now. She, it's like you've had this woman on your on TV for months, and she was always a squeaky clean baby face. And now, for whatever reason, you have her as a heel, which just it just confuses me that they had this woman as a heel for as long as they did. I mean, as a baby face, and then they just go, "Well, we're going to turn her heel." Then with a few um, arm drags and a drop kick sends Aaliyah on the outside. She goes to grab Aaliyah and Aaliyah yanks her head down. She takes control. Uh, let's see here. Then a jumping clothesline take down Yin then on down takes down Yin, then a few elbow drops for a two count. Aaliyah control get Yin gets out of that, tosses her, but Aaliyah with a nice little baseball slide-ish move, but then she does a loose that's press, followed by punches for a two count. Aaliyah gets a northern light suplex and for another two. Aaliyah with a submission on Yim. Yim gets out. Then a forearm tosses Aaliyah, who slides out again. But Yim with a boot this time, then another one. Yim then hits a boot in the corner, then a face wash in the corner, followed by a cannonball. Then a soul food for the three count, and Mia Yim wins. So Mia Yim is off to a good start in NXT. We see William Regal in the back with Bianca Belair. And Bianca Belair is... Saying something, he said something to her, and she's like, "That is unacceptable. I am undefeated. You need to keep it. You need to like, you know, hope like cater to your stars a little bit better. I want my title shot. I want my title shot. I am undefeated." Now, one of the biggest problems with Evolution coming up this week, and the fact that these tapings are all done, is what are they going to do for a women's championship match at NXT Takeover? War Games, because outside of the NXT Championship, what that's the only other title really that's going to be up for grabs, because the NXT, because we all know already, and you don't even have to be a scientist, I've been calling it for months, I've been pitching it for months, the War Games match is going to be the Undisputed Era versus Pete, Pete Dunne, Ricochet, and the War Raiders. That is the North American Championship, the Tag Team titles, and the UK title all going to be in the War Games match, so... NXT TakeOver War Games is only going to have two title matches. We sh- we'll probably know tonight or soon who is going to be facing off against Tommaso Ciampa. But how, what are we going to do about the NXT Women's Championship? That is a question that hasn't been answered. William Eagle walks a little bit more and Kathy Kelly walks up to him and she asks him about what Nikki Cross told Alistair Black last week. He says he doesn't know the name of who it is, but he is going to talk to Alistair Black before he gets because Alistair Black will rampage over all of NXT if we don't do this right. The Undisputed Era comes in and Cole says do your job and get your act to get your act together because you just let EC3 come out there and do that. I can't believe it. Regal makes it makes War Raiders versus Adam Cole and Bobby Fish for next week. I'm pretty sure we are getting the War Games match announced next week because we are getting closer to War Games and we need that match announced. So expect something to go down in that match that breaks it all down because it is four members of the Undisputed Era. I expect that to be a good, I, I expect it to be a good match that breaks down before the match is over and then Ricochet and Pete Dunne get involved and boom. Boom. We're good. Justin Xavier versus Cassius Ono. Cassius Ono was not thrilled with having to take on Justin Xavier. He pretty much underestimated the guy, was saying, this is not what I want, Regal. Xavier did get a couple good shots on Cassius Ono, but in the end, it was the rolling, the grip cord rolling elbow for the three counts. And then, all of a sudden, Cassius Ono's in the ring, and on the stage is Nikki Cross, laughing, saying, he's coming, he's coming. That's something else that I couldn't make out, and then she walks off laughing some more. I don't know doesn't like it's like I don't know what the hell she's talking about. We did get a nice little promo from Matt Riddle. It was no words, it was just a couple of um darkened silhouette versions of him like putting on a submission, making someone tap out, posing in the middle of the ring. And then it was announced that next week Matt Riddle will make his NXT TV debut. This should be fun. Will Cash Yoshono Will Cassius Ono make his presence known and set up a match between him and Ka- and 
Matt Riddle for NXT TakeOver War Games. I do not know. We will see next week. That is definitely going to be something worth checking out. William Regal comes out for his championship announcement. He says he's going to make this announcement when Tommaso Ciampa comes out. And it makes sense, you know, the NXT champion wants to be out there to see and to hear in person who he's going to be facing at NXT TakeOver War Games. Before that can happen, out comes the Velveteen Dream. He says he wants to be, he wants William Regal to say his name. Then Lars Sullivan comes out. And says, be careful what you say because you are in Lars Sullivan territory. And my and the NXT championship belongs to me. And uh, the Velveteen Dream decides to say, Mr. Sullivan, sir, when you like, he said something, and then he said, he said, I don't remember what he said, maybe like the first few words of the um, saying was, but then he said, if you're going to address the uh, Velveteen Dream, you need to be wearing some pants. And the entire full sale unit, full sale just started cracking up. And so Lars Sullivan just gruzzles him by the neck and is choking him out. Then all of a sudden, Nikki Cross from the announce table area, that nice little splot right there, just comes in the ring and chant is yelling, he's coming, he's coming. They flash over out to the parking lot and we see Alistair Black pretty much murdering three, four guys. The, those, those security guys just get completely eviscerated by Alistair Black. He comes in, and Tommaso Ciampa's gone. Velveteen Dream is gone. Lars Sullivan tries to get in the ring, hit, gets hit with a black mask. He gets into William Regal's face and says, where is he? Where is he? William Regal doesn't know who the hell he's talking about, though. That's the problem. He's asking William Regal, where is he? But William Regal doesn't know because William Regal wasn't informed on who it is. Then he, all of a sudden, he turns around and super kicked by Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano looks down at a convulsing Aleister Black and says, I'm right here. Drops the mic, and NXT goes off the air. It just, it doesn't make sense. I'm hoping that this is a ruse by Aleister Black and Johnny Gargano to pull out the real attacker. But if it's Johnny Gargano, why? It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me why it would be Johnny Gargano. I'm hoping it's not the truth because it just doesn't feel like it would be Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano really didn't have a motive for taking out Aleister Black. Maybe it was the motive was to take out Aleister Black because he wanted that one-on-one -on -one match against Tommaso Ciampa. But it just doesn't feel like that's what we should be seeing. NXT has got in the home stretch of NXT TakeOver War Games. We have a lot to look forward to. Unlike, and I love um, NXT UK already. NXT, yeah, NXT UK. But they are just getting started. So we have a long way to go before they actually start feeling like we get down to the home stretch or something. Because there isn't minute, there is nothing like what they take over or anything like that happening yet. It's a nice start, and we'll see where it goes. But this is where you want to spend your Wednesday nights. NXT is where it leads. And before we go anywhere, I did check out the Falls Count Anywhere match between Hideo Tommy and Mustafa Ali. And those two beat the holy piss out of each other. That match was brutal. The ending of it with the 450 through the table was absolutely nasty. And... It's going to be Mustafa Ali versus Tony Nese next week. The winner goes on to face Buddy Murphy whenever they feel like having that match. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see that. But that, in a nutshell, was NXT. The question everybody wants to know, everyone has on their mind, why Johnny? Why? If it's Johnny Gargano, I, it just makes no sense to me, but it's definitely got everyone scratching their head. He just said, I'm right here, as if he was the attacker, but that doesn't mean he is the attacker. It could be that they're just, it could be, and to me it just feels like it's these two putting a plan together to out the actual attacker. But right now, it's Johnny Gargano. And I would really like to know why Johnny Gargano did what he did. But that is NXT for you. We will be back tomorrow for the May Young Classic. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. And find me on Twitter at TheFrance. Find me on Twitch.tv slash TheFrance08. 
until then, I'm getting out of here. I will see you guys tomorrow for the May Young Classic. Saturday for the um, for Unscripted. And Sunday night for a mini Evolution review. As I go over the matches that I predict for Evolution in Unscripted this week. Which will only be half of the matches that are on there. Because the rest of them don't, I don't really care. Not going to do a full... Not going to do a full preview and predictions or a full review of Evolution because WWE just didn't seem to care that much for their own all women's pay per view, so why the hell should I? But that is all. You guys have a good night, and I will see you guys tomorrow for uh, the final episode of the 2018 May Young Classic.